Hello again. Today I am recording after inking. Oh my gosh, it's a revolution. Um, so today I'm going to answer a question that comes in from, let's see, Elite Ninja Kion, who writes, um, I have been enjoying these video blogs of yours. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, insightful to say the least. Maybe tackle your thoughts on organizing story arcs or page layouts. I know you do a simple, usually three to four panel horizontal layout but I'd still like to hear uh, your thoughts on this topic. Okay, um, well, I'll tackle the layouts first because that seems to be um, fairly straightforward. Uh, I do do, th these are my layouts, so it's basically panels across. Um, every once in a while I'll do something uh, more like the Sunday strips where it's a little bit um, taller, I guess. Um, but for some really good insight on panel layouts and storytelling and how panels help control the flow of a story. There's this awesome book, um, Brian Hitch's Ultimate Comic Studio. And uh, this is his thoughts about his process from penciling and inking to layout. There's a huge, hugely important, that's not a thing I should say. There's a great section on the process of storytelling where he goes about discussing um, taking a, a comic script and doing some basic breakdowns, page layouts, and um, you know things he does to control a story in terms of framing and paneling. Um, so I, I highly recommend this book. Uh, I'll send a, I'll put a link in the show notes for uh, the Amazon link. You can buy it. If I was smart, I would do one of those affiliate things, but I'm not quite smart yet. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, highly recommended. Also, Brian Hitch is a fucking fantastic illustrator. And uh, if you want to see more of his stuff, like he has a section on inking, which I found was uh, quite insightful for, for myself. So yes, go out and buy this book. Um, personally, I like um, simple panel layouts where uh, it's, it's more cinematic. You have a wider frame um, so you can fit more stuff in there like backgrounds and things like that. So whenever I do draw traditional comic pages, I tend to use a lot of horizontal frames, a lot of widescreen stuff. Um, I don't know, uh, I did a guest comic for John Allison, uh, Scary Go Round, who's doing Bad Machinery right now. Um, I love that comic. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be able to do a guest comic for him, but uh, my, my panels were nice, big, widescreen movie type panels. Um, it's kind of weird because uh, in, in a big page, like if you break it up with a lot of wide panels, sometimes you don't get to show off all your your good superhero poses and stuff. So it really forces you to concentrate on the storytelling aspects of that frame. Um, so, you know, whether it's like emotion or dialogue, um, it's, it's really tough making dialogue pop in one of these long frames. So it's kind of a challenge as well as something that I find aesthetically pleasing. So, uh... Yeah, so when I do comic book pages, uh, you'll see that I do a lot of wide frames. Um, Earthworld, when I was drawing Earthworld, it, it was a little different. We had an established grid. I think we had like a 4x4 a four four grid. Um, so that was those were the bounds that I had to work in with that project. Um, if it were up to me, I think I probably would have broken out into a little bit more interesting layouts. Um, but, you know, sometimes you got to work within the constraints that you're given. So, um, yeah, on to the next part of your question, which was about story arcs. Now, um, Yellow Peril doesn't have an end in sight. So I'm kind of very free-flowing in terms of planning story arcs. Like, um, I have in mind a couple of notes that I want to hit, like some major notes. Like, I knew I wanted Bodhi's relationship with Julie to be fairly um, fairly cutesy but you know I wanted that one to, to work out fairly quickly so um, the first book uh, you get to see them finally get together um, and and I had I had some specific notes that I wanted to hit like I knew I wanted Julie to take her lunch break and eat lunch with Bodhi to kind of break the ice I wanted her to her to break the ice and so um, as when it comes down to, to writing every week, um, I usually try to write strips in a in a group of three because I update Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It doesn't always work out that way, but I try to make um, 
those three strips have like a an arc to them. Maybe not always a, a beginning, middle, and end of a sequence, but um, maybe the start of an idea on a Monday, and maybe a, a culmination of that idea on a Friday, or something related to that early idea on a Monday. Which doesn't really work out when it comes to put these in a book, because uh, on the book page it's two comics per page, so it kind of breaks up that three, uh, three comic arc schedule thingy. Um, but you know, it works for the updates, and it, it seems to be pretty good. It seems to be working out pretty well. Um, I, I know other future notes that I want to hit. There, there are certain scenes that I have in mind that I want to write. Um, it's just a matter of getting to those naturally. And so that's what I kind of try to keep in mind when I'm writing the comic every week is, um, you know, maybe I have a really good idea for a scene between Ali and Kane, but it just won't work here, so I'll save that for later. Or maybe something that I'm writing now inspires another scene that I can add in like four strips down the line or something like that. So the way I write Yellow Peril is very unstructured, um, very free-flowing, um, and it just kind of, whatever I fit in, I, I want to try to keep the, the thing moving forward, but, you know, I think I've, I've heard of other people who do like long-form comics who have the end in mind, but they don't have like the specific notes and how to get there so they're they're writing towards an end but they go about it and uh, they kind of take their time to get there and uh, Yellow Peril doesn't have an end in mind so I'm just kind of taking my time and playing with these characters and throwing situations up at them and seeing how they'll react so um, those are kind of the considerations that I take into account when I'm writing for this strip um, if I were to go about a different project uh, say something with a longer narrative or like a, a long form graphic novel um, I would probably start with an outline like a general outline like uh, you know all the notes that I want to hit in chronological order and then see which of those notes um, justifies like a chapter or if one of these notes is is maybe like a scene within a chapter and then group them that way so that I have these specific chapters that I want to send out the piece on and then you know, go back and script out, you know, the action scenes and then the dialogue and just go about it piecemeal like that, you know, start from like a big outline and just start filling in the little, the little ends like that. Um, or maybe not, I, I don't know, I, it, I haven't actually sat down to write a big graphic novel project like that, but I think um, to start, I would start with the skeleton to give me something to, to write towards. Um, so, uh, yeah, so those are some ideas on uh, at least how I approach writing to the daily strip, or not the daily strip, the, uh, the weekly strip. Um, so uh, if you guys have any thoughts on uh, your writing habits or on how you write for serial fiction or, or comics or pages and things like that, uh, hit me up with a comment, send me a note, send me an email, send me a tweet, all that kind of good stuff, and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, thanks for watching again, and I guess I'll check you next time. Bye.